Cool. Yeah. Just excited to connect with you. Like I said, it's been uh, a while. Yeah. I've just been following you on the digital webs and everything, all the magic that you're putting out there. Your YouTube channel is great. All the podcasts that you have are awesome. I feel like, you know, this vegan community is really, you know, blowing up and it's just getting better and better. So uh, it's exciting times that we live in. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me on here. Like I'm always, I'm always up for talking different people, sharing different perspectives and most importantly just sharing this message how important it is on so many levels um so really thank you for giving me a, a, your platform to to share this message with yeah indeed no problem really happy to have you so let's just you know start off with a little introduction for people that you know haven't heard about you before uh you know, just talk about what you do and what you've been putting out there for a while now i know you're doing some really good things for sure so my name is tino i'm known as Bananiac on the interwebs. And uh, I started a YouTube channel back in 2013. I was changing my personal lifestyle back in 2012. I, um, I went vegan in 2012. However, I started learning about it in 2011. I grew up in a Greek house. Uh, my, both my parents are from Greece. I was born here actually, but we've always kind of grown up in that culture. And as a Greek orthodox it's kind of you know expected that you fast for 40 days before easter and what i mean by fast is not your typical water fast or anything like that it just means yeah. like giving up meat dairy all animal products and even oil sometimes so yeah. i had never done it um until that point i think i was like 20 or 21 i had never done it the whole 40 days i did like a week yeah. being vegan so I, I was like, whatever, like, I want to do this for my state of mind. Like, I'm like, why, why have I never done this before? So I did it. I did the 40 days I, I, without any animal products. Then Easter day came and I just decided to keep on going. I felt so good. I was losing a little bit of weight because I mean, you can't lose a, a ton of weight in 40 days, but I lost a little bit. I was looking better. I felt better, had more energy. So it's like, yeah, dude, this is great. And um, then I started learning about the ethics side, the environmental aspects of veganism and then i was like wow this all makes sense and so i was so inspired to live that way but also to share with other people that way they at least know that this this happens to the environment the animals in your body that way they can make a conscious decision yeah. so i thought like a youtube channel would be great to share this message with the internet um, most everyone's on the internet yeah um and I personally changed my career paths. Like I was a student back then when I first went with vegan, I was an astronomy major and I went from astronomy to nutrition. That way I could help people professionally, but also through this channel. So I've been doing it for, I don't know, like seven, eight years now. And uh, it's been awesome, man. It's, it's been a blessing. It's so gratifying to get this important information out to people to know about it. Yeah, for sure. No, it's so awesome just to hear such an organic story, too. Uh, I mean, I think a lot of people uh, are just now connecting those dots. I mean, to hear someone come from uh, that background with the Greek, you know, or any sort of religious practice is really cool because the way that I mean, I had a similar experience myself. And then it's like the more you do the research, the more you figure out certain things like the word vegan is just a new word. And all of these things were actually been around for quite some time. So now because of the Internet, right, it's like everybody, you know, demands transparency and and now, you know, the factory farming, all that kind of stuff, the ethical side, uh, the politics, the environment, you name it. It's like connecting all the dots. And what better way to, you know, take action than just being vegan and, you know, making that change yourself. So uh, I think a lot. I think you get the same thing that I do as far as a lot of people that are just kind of new on the path, whether whatever, you know, direction they're coming at it from, whether it's health or, you know, like I said, environment or politics. And uh, like, like you, I just want to share the message and get it out there and be that person to, you know, come to the light. You know, a lot of people want to, you know, have all of that. I feel like everybody wants happiness, you know, optimal performance. These words get thrown around a lot. So whatever, you know, we can do to be that anchor for people to come on board, you know. Definitely. And I love the fact that veganism is becoming more mainstream now. The fact that you can roll through a drive through and get a, a vegan burger, like, yeah. you know, tell them to hold the cheese, of course. But yeah. like, what the, what? Uh, like, isn't that crazy? <laughs> like, we never thought this time would come. And yeah. now it's here. It's reality. And I also like the fact that when you say vegan, it's no longer that stereotypical answer. Like, like, literally anybody could be vegan walking down the street you have no idea and i love that i love that vegan 
is just like the norm now and it's not like something niche you know what i mean oh yeah yeah it's amazing it's, it's really come full circle you're right i mean it's fun too because i have a lot of like you know activist friends that are doing a lot of fun things you know i have a lot of health you know friends that are nutritionists and counseling i i love it all so it's funny like how you know full circle like how wide the spectrum is now right uh, before i got it I mean, i've been vegan let's see over 11 years now and it's something like when all this started there was no you know trend there was no cool thing about it you know i was eating like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches i didn't even know how to cook or anything you know <laughs> uh, but but now it's like it's definitely you know come full circle like i said to where you can have amazing food and like like you said it's even available at fast food restaurants now i definitely didn't see this coming like i thought it was going to be way longer before we would ever see it at fast food chains and stuff but you know you just got to follow the dollar right i think these uh you know these big corporations aren't stupid they see where the money is going and they want to you know get it so they're going to do what it takes to have plant-based options and yeah it's just exciting it's really exciting to see it come full circle like that i am really surprised to see uh you know plant-based burgers and things at carl's jr and even kfc now has you know nuggets and everything like every <laughs> everyone is going to have some sort of big thing Freaking McDonald's now is trying to make, I think, their own plant burger or they're teaming up with Beyond Meat or something. Yeah. But, man, I said it. Like, if McDonald's gets on board, that's it. That yeah. That's end of story. Like, everyone's going to be on board after that because they're, they're the largest fast food chain out there. Yeah. So, I mean, it's amazing to see them get behind that because the demand is there. Yeah. Um, these are just businesses. They're not out to, like – Destroy, destroy the planet. On, I mean, I'm sure there are a bunch of conspiracies out there. The way I think about it is, I think of it as just a business yeah. trying to make a profit and they're going to give people what, what they demand. So I think yeah. more people are demanding it now and, you know, what a better time than ever to be vegan. Yeah, totally. Like I said, I might tell people now there's just no excuses now. It's like, you know, before I could kind of understand like, oh, I don't know how to cook. I don't know what to do. But now it's like, no, I'm sorry. There's no excuses. You can go anywhere and do anything and have that, you know, craving, whether it's a burger or whatever in a plant-based way. So uh, I'm all for it. And yeah, I agree with you. It's a business and it just comes down to supply and demand. You know, the more that we can demand it, the more that that supply is going to increase. And that's exactly what's happening right now. I mean, more of the fact factory farms are going under and turning into mushroom farms or other things. I mean, just look at plant-based milks alone, right? Almond milk and things like that. I mean, I, for me, I cut out dairy for the first few years and that was the biggest, you know, component that I was really suffering from. And that really, I think most people are kind of onto that, even if they're not fully vegan or whatever, at least, you know, the dairy consumption has gone way down. So uh, it's really good to see that happening kind of on a mass scale and to see this happening, you know, worldwide rather than just be that small little niche that what people were vegan or vegetarian it was only for like rich people and organic food and all that stuff was like a very small niche and people have really started connecting the dots so it's cool i think i think dairy is the one that is probably the easiest for people to kind of make the switch on um yeah i work with clients uh you know i've seen uh clients for nutrition and the first step that i hear them take towards veganism even though their goal might not to be to go vegan but when i'm saying is like they might change their diet and typically switching to a plant-based milk is the first positive step that I see because a lot of people realize that why are we drinking milk from another mammal? Milk is just designed to be fed to that mammal's baby, not yeah. to be given to another species. So I think a lot of people connect with that. And you know, the fact that it causes so many issues that a lot of people are lactose intolerant or even allergic the milk protein and switching to plant-based milk solves that yeah. and it's much healthier for you it has lower fat no cholesterol um no added hormones like it's the way to go yeah. um and uh speaking of like business wise like um you know not to like drop names i'm not like sponsored by anyone but Oatly yeah. is killing it right now because they're putting ads everywhere i was yeah. just in california last month and everywhere you would go you would see a billboard or like on a bus or a bench, like advertisements for oat milk. Like yeah. what? <laughs> Again, just like it shows you how the world's changing now. It's amazing. Yeah. 
It is. I think right now, uh, especially as time going forward, like we just demand transparency. That's really the big, you know, shift that's happened with all of this and any business, especially food products. So that's really where it comes down to. Obviously, the oat milk is way more sustainable, way more, you know, nutrient dense than anything that comes from an animal. So I think people are just connecting those dots. And there's just, like I said earlier, there's no excuses. So they see that and they're like, okay, now I just, you know, I'm going to go for the oat milk. It's cheaper. It's better for you. I mean, why, you know, there's just all those dots just add up. So it's cool. It's something that, like I said, I've been doing kind of behind the scenes for so long. And then just to see it so readily available and everything, especially places like California or, or you know, Portland, Oregon or whatever. It's like all of this stuff is pretty much the norm. And I see the day where it's like we're looking back and it's like, wait, we were killing animals. Like what, what's going on here? You know, it's back. They're going to they're gonna see it as like, in a way, kind of like the wars that we look at now back in the past, you know? Yeah. Or, or the slavery or or the injustice all that it's, it's going to be tied in together with the with history yeah and i'm glad to see that the world is changing um you know i'm sure at any time of uh you know the, the world's lifetime like there was always people that got it but the majority yeah. were kind of always kind of you know in that in that mess you know what i mean yeah but, oh yeah but veganism is breaking through and I'm super excited. It is. It's because of the internet and everything too. That's kind of the major difference. You know, those, those big powers at B, you know, the meat and dairy companies have been playing so many hands in, you know, uh, marketing and leading these, you know, fake studies and blah, blah, blah. So I think all of that, like I said, the transparency is out now because of the internet, because somebody can just get on their phone and Google it, you know, that's a rel- relatively new thing in that spectrum of mankind. So uh, because we have all that power in our phone and our pocket now, you don't really have, you know, any excuse to just do that other thing. Somebody can just pull it up like, nope, actually, this is better for you. And da, 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 and that's all it takes right there to sail the ship. So, well, I'm also, yeah, uh, it's cool because I'm a fellow cyclist as well. I know you're into cycling. Uh, I'm more of the, uh, I would call myself like an adventure cyclist. I like long distance. Uh, I've done lots of big rides like in the Pacific Northwest across multiple states and things like that. I love just being free on my bicycle and the whole um, just, uh, workout movement the sort of thing for me always falls in line with a bicycle so that's just where I've been since childhood and that's always resonated with me and there's a I totally love biking man um, I used to live in Florida and I got super into it I would ride my bike like pretty much every day riding groups I would race uh, on on the road um, it's such a great sport and the fact that you can be out in nature you can go anywhere you could cross states uh, that's yeah. amazing I've not I've never done long treks like that before the longest ride I've ever done is 115 miles it's not really that impressive in terms of cycling oh that's super impressive what are you talking about that's great for the average Joe I mean that's a lot of miles you know yeah but I mean people are like killing it you know um, and, and doing like rides across the country and things like that so yeah. um my style is more of like i guess a little bit competitive and to ride fast and all that but um yeah you really could go anywhere with the sport i'm not just talking about location but just like you could you could go on the dirt you could ride fast and short rides you can like trek you can commute uh yeah. bicycle is just it's it's one of the greatest inventions that, yeah. and i freaking love it man Oh, yeah, the electric bikes are really blowing up too. I got to ride one of those last year for the first time, and I was like, "Oh my!" It like really puts you back. You're like, "Oh, it felt like a little car." You know, I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is crazy!" So, it the technology is really taking over. <laughs> Where do you live, by the way? Uh, I'm, I'm in, in Hawaii, Hawaii now. now. Uh, we moved oh, to right Hawaii, on. yeah, full time in Hawaii now. But I'm uh, born and raised in California, so uh, oh, I'm from, from Northern, Northern California, California, Sacramento area. area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you know my friend uh, Rain? He's at Cycling Spirit on Instagram. I don't. Mm-mm. He he is from Hawaii, and I cool. believe he visits back and forth. Uh, he lives in Miami now, and he's actually the founder of Miami Fruit. Oh, okay, yes. You should. I know that I've uh, I've seen Miami Fruit before. I follow them on Instagram. I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's that definitely rings a bell. They do the fruit delivery and all that. Yeah, sweet. He's a killer cyclist, man nice he's so fast and like will ride far too like he's like 
just casually, hey, man, you want to go down the Keys? And, like, from Miami, it's, like, a, a good bit of distance. <laughs> like, oh, are you kidding me? Just straight up like that, okay? <laughs> um, but, no, he's, he's, uh, he's a, a fast cyclist, and um, it was really cool meeting him in person, hanging out, but um, definitely riding with him. Awesome. Yeah, dude, I'm all for it. I'm all for that networking and connection. That's great, dude. That'd be awesome. Um, cool. So let's, I'm just curious for people listening and watching, you know, let's give them a little um, tidbit as far as like, you know, somebody that just went vegan, you know, I have a lot of people, like, let's say they went vegan last month or three months ago. Let's just give them some, some tips and tricks to kind of stay steady on the, on the path, you know, especially, I mean, I'm jealous, honestly, of anybody going vegan right now because of all this, uh, you know, transitional food is what I call it. Like, you know, these plant-based burgers and all that kind of stuff. There are serious Seriously, anything, hot dogs, whatever is, you know, plant based now. Um, and yes, it's, you know, it's there. It's good for us. It's something that I, I call it transitional food. Ideally, we want that, you know, whole food kind of plant based, just, you know, diet that's really going to get the most out of it. And we can talk about that. But just, you know, I know you're a master with nutrition. So let's just give somebody a little tips and tricks that are new to this. Yeah, no need to complicate things. It's very yeah. simple. Um, I mean, if you have a craving in the beginning for like meat or cheese, you know, like you mentioned, there's all these great products out there. Try them out. Um, they're delicious. And you can't really tell that you're eating plants, which yeah. is in a way it's amazing. Um, so definitely incorporate that stuff in your diet. Ideally, health wise, ideally, we want you on a whole food plant based diet, um, eating lots of whole grains, um, legumes like beans, peas, lentils. Yeah fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, um, lots of water. And yeah, like, you know, you look up, um, recipes like, like forks over knives has a great, great website with a bunch of free recipes. I always kind of direct people there. I have a little ebook myself. If you're just curious, like what I personally, eat, um, you can find that on my website, but if you're looking for a re a free resource, um, go to forksoverknives.com. If you need um, motivation, uh, Forks Over Knives, the documentary is actually really good. And it yeah. talks to you a lot about um, the, health as the health benefits of that and has a lot of great um, people behind it like Dr. Esselstyn, Dr. Campbell, Dr. Barnard, and these um, innov innovators in terms of um, nutritional advice. They're amazing. So if you're looking for an educational source, that's a good one. Um, just keep it simple like eat the same things over and over again um they everyone stresses variety which variety is a good thing you don't want to just eat one food the whole the rest of your life but you typically end up getting enough variety if you have like two three recipes you know maybe a little bit more than that that you kind of like rotate so yeah. kind of pick your favorite foods make them over and over again you're gonna like what you're eating and you're yeah. gonna get plenty of nutrition in um, just don't make the mistake that most people make where they think, you know, I'm going to eat healthy and I'm going to eat just vegetables and, and, and some fruit, which I mean, some people can pull that off, but for the majority, it's, it's not enough calories. You're going to get hungry yeah. and you're going to binge. And, uh, hopefully, hopefully it would be a, a vegan binge, but most people end up just going back to their old lifestyle. Yeah. You know, veganism, that plant-based diet didn't work out for me. I ate salad every day. I ate healthy food every day, <laughs> but it just didn't work out for me. No, it's because you you didn't get enough calories to keep you satisfied. So you got to put in those whole grains, beans, um, fruits are great. You can do uh, smoothies or fruit salads, but make sure you're getting all the different food groups and then throw them all in recipes that you enjoy. So if you don't like straight up beans and rice, make chili or, yeah. or turn it into hummus or something, you know, like yeah. find your favorite recipes, customize it for your palate and just keep it simple. Yeah, totally. I completely agree with that. And that's something, uh, thank you for mentioning that as far as the binge eating and stuff too. I see that happening quite a bit and it's something that people are just not getting enough calories. They don't, like I said, for me in the beginning, I didn't know what I was doing. It was peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, you know, and I ate like four or five of those in one sitting. Cause that's all I knew that was vegan as far as the options that were available to me, you know? So it's just about what works for you and the passion. I think that's the big link there is if you like bananas, just eat a bunch of bananas. You know, if you like, 
that one, you know, legume or whatever it might be in that recipe, then just make it and go for it. Um, it's always going to be what you're passionate about, what you're excited about eating, not so much, um, you know, I feel like vegan, especially in the beginning, a lot of people just think restriction, you know, they think like, oh, I can't have all of this and I can't have that. It's like, dude, there's like Ben and Jerry's ice cream that's vegan now and like, like anything, you know. <laughs> now there's like so many different options. Um, restriction is no longer an excuse for veganism, yeah. um, you know, and and it's not like, like you, you can't really, I don't know. If, if you're eating a meat-based diet, like some things you, you have to like cut back on for your health. There's just like no other way around it. Yep. Um, science is science. The truth is the truth. Um, you cannot change your physiology because you believe meat is good. Uh, <laughs> there's only one way your body works. Okay? <laughs> okay. So you have to like cut out certain things. But in, in the grand scheme of things, there, there is no restriction. Like you can eat, there's so many different varieties of plants. I mean, if you like look at fruit alone and you eat one new fruit every day for the rest of your life, you won't eat all the fruits that ever exist. Just looking <laughs> at fruits. Now imagine all the different plants out there. Yeah, that's um, true. So, you know, um, eat, eat the foods that you enjoy the most. Uh, and experiment, try new things that you haven't tried before. I mean, um, before I went vegan, I never had durian or jackfruit or, yeah. um, you know, stuff like that. Like I, that's not restriction to me. I saw it as an opportunity to explore other foods that I never tried before. Yeah, me too. Um, so for me, um, the whole restriction thing never made sense because I was eating things that I'd never eaten before. Yeah, me too. hundred percent. There was, uh, you know, after being vegan, it's something that opened me up to a lot of other things that I just weren't even out didn't even know existed like durian and jackfruit and those things. I mean, jackfruit, I feel like has come full circle and that's like, there's jackfruit recipes everywhere now, like even savory, you know, tacos and pulled pork type things. And it's like, it's something that one fruit alone has really come into the vegan scene and changed everything, you know? So it's good to see this awareness happen. Um, you know, the thing that I see a lot too, is people, uh, you know, broaden your your horizons from just the grocery store as well like for me uh, I've you know I worked at grocery stores I've worked at a lot of farms um, uh, that's kind of my passion you know my first job when I was 14 was picking peaches and plums and that's kind of what I've always been doing the last farm I ran was like a, a citrus farm that was absolutely amazing with 2,500 fruit trees and just love and life you know um, the thing that like what I'm getting to is that people just you know there's more variety out there than just what you see at the grocery store and uh, being vegan being you know know, into agriculture and just farming in general that led me to go out to these farms directly or even just get to the farmer's market and talking to these people, getting, you know, a relationship with the people that actually grow your food versus mindlessly just going to the grocery store, and, you know, getting your shopping list sort of thing. Um, that is going to allow you to eat more seasonally, more in tune with the exact environment that you live in and get the ultimate, you know, nutritional density right there because you're actually connected with your local landscape. Yeah, and you save a lot of money too if you shop locally. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a lot of the, the the majority of the price you pay for at the supermarket is for transportation. Um, yeah. You save a whole lot when you buy from a local farmer, you buy in bulk, um, he'll cut you some deals here and there, yeah. um, and, and you support local business. It's it's amazing. You have to do that. and. Yeah. Um, it definitely benefits everything. The yeah. environment, business is your wallet. Um, so yeah, definitely, uh, you know, Whole Foods is cool. Moms is cool, but definitely get out there and, and try different things in terms of like uh, where you shop. So farmer's markets are excellent. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, it's something that I tapped into. Those people, like I said, they're always asking things. And I feel like I just want to, you know, debunk a lot of those things. Like, veganism is expensive, right? That's one of them. Like, boom, we just debunked it. Like, it's not actually if you go to the farmer's market or you buy in bulk, and especially fruit and things that are like, you know, have a, a shelf life, you know? So you go there and you can see they're kind of getting soft and ripe. It's like, that's going to be way discounted compared to the stuff that just got trucked in at the grocery store. So little, little tips like that that I've been doing for a long time long time that has definitely made it way cheaper and more uh you know it's better for you too that's the other thing it's like that fruit that's ripe is obviously better for you that's honestly my biggest pet peeve is seeing people eat unripe fruit man 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I worked at Whole Foods for two years in California, and I would see people come up and grab a green banana on their lunch break or whatever, and I'm like, oh my god! Like I just, I would just. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a big one. That's a super big one. I mean, not only is it not good for you, but you're just not getting the nutrients. I mean, the starches haven't converted. There's nothing there, you know. Uh it's it's quite funny to me, but I just get it because of the um, you know, the world that we live in. It's very convenient. It has to be very quick and this and that, you know. So it's like you really you get what you pay for sort of thing. For sure. And um also before when you were mentioning about like like uh price and stuff um sometimes people will say um meat and dairy is is cheaper than like their vegan alternatives and if you compare price tag to price tag it might be but that's because a lot of that is subsidized so the taxpayer pays for it anyway um and the government lowers the the price because of it and so if if it was not like that it like it would be much more expensive and more like much less people would be buying meat and dairy. Yeah, yeah I agree a hundred percent. It's and when you really go down the rabbit hole with all that, it's amazing how many, you know, people's hands are in each other's pockets sort of thing. And it's crazy what they uh, allow into all of that as far as making it subsidized and things. And it just doesn't make any sense to me at all how we live in that world. Uh, especially when you think about the corn and the soy and all the other stuff too, on the vegetable side that gets subsidized, that is not even for humans anyway. So it's very interesting, this really weird world that we got ourselves in with, uh, you know, GMO, Monsanto, chemical, just artificial world that we have now, unfortunately. Um, so that's why, I mean, that's a big part of why I'm here in Hawaii and think like a lot of the stuff that I do is trying to really create that environment for myself to have that ultimate ultimate nutrition and lifestyle so that's something i think people could relate with as far as just creating that environment that you can access all these foods to um i've lived all over too i mean even in alaska i was completely vegan and stuff like there's no excuses you know it's something that it's pretty much available anywhere in any state so you can really connect with that local farmer and and get the best nutrition that you can yeah yeah and now that you like brought up uh, you know your your farm and stuff like that like uh, even gardening like if when the seasons permits it's it's so cool to grow your own tomatoes or something like helps you cut back on your grocery bill but you also eat something that you can pick right then and there it's it's amazing Uh, a lot of people do not garden and i i'll admit like i i could do much much more um but yeah just another great great idea for people to do is to get involved with gardening and grow your own food. Yeah, totally. Yeah, uh, I completely agree with that. Uh, All right, let's talk a little bit about uh, just supplements real quick. I think a lot of people are confused or they hear about like B12 or something, you know, uh, something like that as far as being vegan or just nutrient deficiencies all around, you know, let's kind of debunk that a little bit because I think that's a, a big topic that people hear about as soon as the word vegan comes up. Sure. B12 is typically like the go-to answer. Like I got it. B12, (laughs) you cannot be vegan. Um, And so like, it's even like, like they'll say like protein and stuff, but B12, it's like, boom. So with B12, um, B12, there's different sources of cobalamin that we ingest and uh, that cobalamin bacteria will use to, to make vitamin B12 in our body. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, B12 is not, uh, made by animals, uh, or any, it's made by bacteria. And so the reason why it's in animal products in meat and stuff is because that cow or that pig was eating bacteria off the ground and, and producing that in its body. Um, we can do it too. Uh, but however, our our environment is not what it used to be and also we live indoors like we're not out all day so um i would advise people to take a b12 supplement it's it's pretty safe it's relatively safe and it guarantees that you're going to get enough b12 to avoid the terrible neurological uh, problems that you might have from not taking it fortunately it takes a long time for that to happen and you can run your blood work every year to kind of monitor your b12 
um, I, I think that any, like, I think checking your blood work is definitely a good idea, at least yearly. Yeah. Um, so now I don't, I'm, I don't care too much about the controversy about the different types of B12s. Yeah. Um, but in general, uh, from what I found is that um, methylcobalamin is absorbed a little bit more efficiently by the body than um, hydroxycobalamin. And yeah. I am, uh, I'm blanking out on the other one. A those are the two big, yeah there you go yeah that's the one um so yeah those those three but um yeah take take whichever one um maybe the cheapest or if you want to go with methylcobalamin totally cool but but just yeah. take it is what i recommend yeah it's definitely easier and safe i used one from global healing center um i would say the next one is would be iodine that's the biggest one that i see that as far as i mean that would be for anybody too i mean meat eating or, or not you know uh those are probably the biggest one the next thing we can talk about is the big protein myth uh i feel like uh that's something that comes up a lot like do where do you get your protein bro you know that sort of whole thing that comes up all the time and there's this bigger uh marketing you know scheme happening all the time everywhere i feel like as soon as that that happened that's been probably i don't know at least five years now where i feel like pro protein is just on everything freaking every granola bar every th you know everything that you see all of a sudden has protein like the word protein on it and it's like wait wait why is that there you know or, or like gluten-free same thing it's like they put the word gluten-free on you know a bottle of water or something and it's like wait a minute well just because people are aware about gluten now doesn't mean that everything else has to be gluten-free you know <laughs> for sure like it's become this marketing term like yeah. if you look at like let's say like a granola bar with like a bunch of different stuff in there like like raisins and I don't know, oats and stuff, then you see protein on the outside. But why am I not hearing about the vitamin C and the raisins or the fiber or any, you know what I mean? Um, so, uh, yeah, the, the whole protein thing's kind of ridiculous in the fact that it's still like it's something that people bring up. It's yeah. kind of scary. Uh, so you could definitely get enough protein on a 100% vegan diet. Yeah. Um, to, if you, if you want to debunk this like in an instant, just, just buy Beyond Meat burgers. Yeah. If, if that's how worried you are it's got just about the same or even more i forget um the comparison but uh it might be about the same as a regular burger yeah. like a meat-based burger mm -hmm. so you could eat that instead you get enough protein yeah. however if you want to go whole food plant-based like there's protein in everything everything even vegetables fruits um all that adds up uh but majority of your diet what I recommend at least and um, I recommend getting uh, mostly like whole grains in like like starches uh, beans all that stuff's gonna have a lot of protein um, and then definitely eating lots of fruits and vegetables too and and you know you can have nuts too and like um, nut butters and all that has protein so like at the end of the day you're getting enough yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> I I honestly I don't know like how people will bring it up at, in this day and age, you know, with all the vegan alternatives yeah. and even just like the, the knowledge out there that all plant foods have. Now there's this other thing where they say they're not complete proteins. Yeah. Right. Um, but, but again, every single plant out there has every single essential amino acid that you need just yeah. in different ratios. Exactly. So if you're eating a variety, and again, it doesn't have to be a crazy variety, but just enough, the different food groups that we talked about, mm -hmm. you're going to get all the essential amino acids. Yeah. And you said the key word right there, amino acid. I think for me, that's the word that needs to be recognized and not the protein part. And if you really go down the rabbit hole, that's really what needs to be addressed here. And the other thing is proteins, uh, I would say, are just, they're not all equal. You know, you people like, uh, I honestly don't like the, the macro, you know, calorie FDA, you know, food pyramid thing, just because when people get, it's like very shallow approach, you know, and so, something um, like inflammation, I think people are aware about now, like that's some, a word that is kind of caught up into the mainstream and uh protein is a good example where those two sources are going to create uh, different levels of inflammation depending on what it is you know so i think pea protein is a very common uh thing that's just you know added into a lot of these things and that's very different than that burger you know with the protein you, yes you can use that same word protein but like i said
said, is it going to create an inflammatory response? You know, that's a different question. So that's where it comes down to the amino acids and just looking at a little bit more than just the surface there than the word protein and digging a little bit deeper to understand, you know, these building blocks in order to create that healthy body that we want. Absolutely. And also just like looking at the food as a whole package rather than just protein, because yeah. let's say like um, some bodybuilder out there is looking at, you know, their whey protein thing. And they're like, oh, it's got like an amazing amino acid profile. Like this is great for me. However, like there's other things in there besides protein, buddy, um, you know, yeah. that that protein is not going to be good for your for your arteries. It's not exactly. going to be good for, you know, cancer prevention. Um, you know, if if you're lactose intolerant or whatever, like it's just, you got to look at a food as the whole package rather than just a protein source or vitamin C source. Um, so like, I think Dr. Campbell talks a lot about this a lot. Uh, it's called reductionism or like a reductionist point of view. Mm -hmm. Um, basically not to like look at specific nutrients, but a symphony of all these nutrients working together. And that's what a whole food plant-based diet is. So, you know, if you're struggling with all these problems, get in the point of view where you're looking at whole foods um, because, uh, you know, you're not going to go insane with all these different little things that people are pointing out to you um, when at the end of the day, a whole food plant-based diet pretty much has everything. And, you know, a little bit of B12 here and there is not going to hurt you either. Yeah, totally. That's how I look at it too. I love Dr. Campbell and all those things. I look at this as a holistic approach. We need to really target this from all angles, you know, and for me, it just comes back to nature. You know, I think at the end of the day, you know, trusting nature and trusting this earth to provide for us rather than something synthetic or chemical based, you know, so that's really where it gets interesting, especially when you talk about supplements or, uh, you know, protein or whatnot. It's like, yes, you can get that from a whole food source, which is going to be way more digestible. You're going to assimilate the nutrients a lot more easily than you would if it was in this big, you know, concentrated chemical lab created thing. So just throwing that out there. Uh, the last thing that I can think about that's kind of on people's wave as far because we live in this, you know, keto uh, fat uh, world now, you know, as far as being very uh, popular in the trends. And I feel like the DHA gets thrown around a lot. And that's something that I think people are aware of when it comes to having the right amount of fats and the omega three to six ratio. And let's just talk about that a little bit because I think people, a lot of people are on this keto, you know, bandwagon because of the uh, ketogenesis, you know, kind of science uh, that's out there and different things at the end of the day. Like I said, it's like, are you going to create that inflammatory response and do more damage to yourself? Or are you just going to get the right balance of nutrients and protein, everything that you need in a whole food format? And that way you're good to go. Sure. That is another one. Uh, DHA or omega threes. Yeah. Um, are brought up in terms of the vegan diet. I, I interviewed um, Dr. Milton Mills. There's a video on my YouTube channel. It's really good. It goes super in depth. A very knowledgeable guy on uh, that topic. Um, cool. From what I, from what I know, the little that I know, and I'm not a biochemist or anything like that. So forgive me, but I'm pretty sure that EPA comes from from plants, and the DHA would come from like let's say like like fish or fish oil. Yeah. However, if our bodies are relatively healthy and we get enough EPA from plants, we can convert it just like fish can to yep. DHA and we would get enough. Um, Dr. Greger, I believe he, he recommends a few supplements, believe it or not. So he recommends B12, uh, vitamin D, and also um, I think a plant-based version of a DHA. Uh, he says uh, everyone should be getting these just to assure that you, you know, you're getting enough through your diet. Um, but I don't know, I've ran the numbers and it's pretty darn easy to get enough omega three in a yep. vegan diet. So you could do true. things like flax seeds, yep. chia seeds, um, walnuts are excellent and plus all the other different foods that you eat. So you go on chronometer.com and open yourself an account, um, and just, uh, put in what you eat in a day and, and look at the profile look, and, and look at the omega threes too. If you eat lots of, uh, or just a little bit of flax and chia, you should be getting enough. Um, and then, uh, what else was I going to say? I think I lost my train of thought, but, um, a- anyhow, it's, it's, it's just, uh, it's just another easy, um, situation here where if, if you, 
eat these healthy foods, you're, you're going to end up getting enough. Oh, oh, I know what I was going to say is that um, what's important is also the ratio of omega-3 to omega-6. Uh, most of us, like population, most of the population gets too much omega-6, which yeah. is found in refined oils and fats. And uh, once your ratio goes off, then you start seeing uh, health problems. So it's not so much uh, of getting enough omega-3s. It's just keeping it in, in a one to four ratio, which I, I don't know who came up with that, but that seems to be the consensus of, you know, yeah. how it should be. Um, so that's the little knowledge that I have on the topic. Oh, you're, you're spot but, on. Uh, yeah, flax seeds, chia seeds, walnuts. I mean, they're they're great for you. So why not include them in your diet? Yeah, exactly. And it's and that's the, the whole connecting the dots as far as that food being your medicine too. You know, I think that's something um, as far as just proclaiming the whole food plant-based diet because that's something at the end of the day where you can be like, okay, I'm getting in this and it, and it works. So I think the big thing with the uh, six to three ratio is because, you know, the average American is getting all of their calories from canola oil. You know, that's really the kicker right now is a lot of processed food. A lot of things come from canola oil and um, Unfortunately, I mean, that's not even a food for humans at all. And it's just really terrible all around. So something as simple as that, like just cutting out canola oil will, you know, get that ratio back in line right there without really focusing on the omega threes, you know? So I think that's, yeah, that's just a big component. The only thing I think I would add to is the, um, things like spirulina, algae and different things. That's like the DHA, uh, sourced as well that people can obviously throw in a scoop of spirulina in their smoothie sort of thing. Um, that will really bump it up. I mean, and that has B12 and protein, all the other stuff we mentioned too. So, uh, this, this is where it kind of cross references into the ethics, right? Into the other side of life because obviously you know it's much more sustainable to grow an algae that's you know pretty much available i give a, uh, a blue hawaiian brand that's grown right here in hawaii that's local and amazing versus you know killing a sentient being to get that you know so that's where i think that really cross references like that person that's you know being vegan because they want to lose weight but then all of a sudden they do the research about the omegas and it's like okay i'm actually just going to get this spirulina powder rather than you know, that other form that I was getting before with my meat based diet. It's, it's so awesome that we, we can do this. We can be vegans and be healthy. Yeah. Um, you know, naturally our bodies are designed to eat plants. Like I'm fortunate about that. Like, yeah. like if somebody just uh, before, even if I was vegan, right. I walked down the street and they asked me, you know, if you could be vegan, uh, and eat plants and never have to kill animals again, when you want to do it, like, I'd be like, in theory, yeah. I, I mean, I probably wouldn't miss, miss meat and they would educate me like, oh, there's a bunch of stuff out now. But like, <laughs> why not? Like, why not live a life where you don't have to take a life? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Ex yeah, exactly. For me, you know, uh, getting all of this as well. I, you know, I'm a yoga teacher and I teach meditation. And, you know, we can talk about that a little bit too with your Greek uh, background. Because, like I said, when you go uh, deeper down this rabbit hole, you really understand that it's more than just food. You know, that's why um, I created my channel and everything. I could easily just be some vegan, like raw vegan, whatever channel. But at the end of the day, I want to talk about spirituality and talk about that bigger picture, you know, because it's affecting your performance. And for me, I can remember like a specific meditation what I was doing where uh, a lot of like the anxiety a lot of the issues and emotional traumas and things what you know that I was feeling wasn't coming from me you know it was coming from those animals that I was putting in my body you know so it took me a lot of uh you know practice and discipline to be able to understand that you know whereas most people are just in that zombie mode just mindlessly consuming and it's because they're not connecting those dots so um and for you like i said it's so cool to you know come about it as far as just that 40-day fast i mean many you know there's ramadan there's many different you know religious practices that have that as far as you know ingrained in their just system and for at the end of the day you have to ask like why you know why would somebody want to do that especially before easter and before these you know specific days and events where we should all be communing together as a you know brothers and sisters and coming together for uh the greater good of humanity yeah for sure i'm not a preacher nor am i super religious yeah. um but like yeah let's take the easter example like you know you're celebrating um Christ rising, right? Yeah. Rising from the dead. Yeah. Like, why are you serving a dead animal? Yeah. Like, it makes no sense to me, man. <laughs> it makes no sense. Like, I, I, I think that dinner should be a peaceful dinner, yeah. something to celebrate life, right? Yeah. Not to celebrate death, like the whole 
rising uh, is, is, is life again. Um, I'm not super religious again, but I totally think people should connect spiritually with this because there's more to life than just being alive. Um, yeah, you know, your actions uh, affect the outside world. Yes. Yes, I'm just saying you don't have to be religious or whatever. We don't have to go there. I just mean uh, as far as what you're feeling, like I can guarantee you, and you can talk about it if you want, but just uh, you're getting more than just, uh, you know, like a, a six pack, you know, from being vegan. You see what I'm saying? Like this is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly for me that's what kind of threw me the, over the edge with this like i said that meditation is like sure i can eat it and do it but it's like wow he's connecting these dots for the the mental clarity and just the exact energy that you're putting out into the universe is completely different because of what your body is made of you know well, you are what you eat quite literally to the most you know nth degree and when your cells have that violence have that you know death in them it's like you're reverberating that energy out into the universe and attracting that same thing so the more you know the way that i look at it is you know without getting religious or anything it's just the word purification right that's that's what we're doing is we're purifying our temple we're purifying our body in order to handle this higher consciousness this energy that is available to us so um, i think that's what's exciting right now is like i said i have so many friends that are vegan and it's like you know whether you're activist whether you're this fruitarian person whether you're coming at it from any point of view it's like we can we can all relate as far as you know getting more than just you know what we're eating out of it there's a bigger picture that we're all tapping into yeah for yeah. sure this is way more than just like my health like yeah i took it upon me to be a good steward of this planet and not to harm animals um you know i don't want to like be biting into my food and then having to have that guilt you know even before actually when i would eat meat i, I can't say i felt guilty but yeah. right now i'm probably more conscious of what i do that's yes. that's the that's a trick man exactly. it's like before I would bite into a burger without any consciousness besides what's on the surface. Like, Oh, it's, this tastes good. Like this makes me feel good. That's all surface. Yeah. Now it's deep, man. Like I, like I have a connection with my food and, and like, I feel good about, every bite that I take because it, it stands for something, you know? What? Yeah. Oh, totally. And that's what I'm saying. It's so much more than what your health and you can feel it. You can feel this. And that's beautifully put what you said as far as the surface, because I was in the same way. It's just like zombie mode. You're going through the drive through, you get the burger, it tastes good, whatever. And that's it. There's no, there's nothing about it. So once you kind of make that switch into being vegan, it's like you care, like you actually have some passion and you know, you're, you're raising your own consciousness. And then it's just a side effect because it's contagious, right? Because people see, you you're you're full of energy you're excited about life and they're gonna ask you questions like oh what did you do oh actually i went vegan and i eat this you know plant-based burger now or whatever it is and it's contagious because people want happiness people want to feel good <laughs> and like uh, that's why i always wear the hat like oh what does that v stand for it stands yeah. for vegan or veganism you know what i mean yeah um it, like i you know, anytime I have a, a meal, like people will, will, will see it and like, we'll talk, you know, we'll talk about it. Um, there's always a way to, to kind of like bring this up and, and share the message without, you know, telling somebody D don't eat meat. Like, what yeah. you're doing is mur you know, like <laughs> treating the person as a person. But um, yeah, I, I freaking love using any opportunity I can to kind of mention it and, and yeah. kind of grow a seed in somebody's head that yeah. later, later on they could like think about it. Totally. They're going to definitely water that seed and eventually they're going to connect those dots, whether it's just seeing somebody at the drive through get the plant based option or somebody at the dinner table or or anything. I was you know, I definitely went through that vegan police uh, phase the first couple of years where you're just, uh, you know, you're honestly just frustrated about life. You know, you figure out about factory farming, you figure out about all the things that are happening. You're just pissed off at the world, you know, and you just want to tell people like, hey, put down the cheeseburger sort of thing. Obviously, that didn't get me anywhere. That honestly took backward steps in my life because I, f I tell people if you have anything to defend you know then you're kind of not confident in your own path right there and it wasn't until I fully kind of let go of all that and just you know became myself and do me then now people people ask me you know questions now more than ever and it's just because I don't I have nothing to prove here you know I'm not uh, to me it's obvious it's very obvious and I feel like it's just an evolution of the soul like people that are gonna they're gonna connect these dots eventually one way or another I don't have anything to push on them I just want to provide that space for 
people to come to when they, you know, have that light bulb moment. They're like, wow, okay, this is harming my body. This is harming the planet. What do I do about this? And then boom, people can, you know, go to our YouTube channels or watch our podcast, whatever sort of thing. And just, there you go. Now you're in the circle and you have people, you have information, you have science, you have whatever credibility you need in order to keep you on the path. I agree 100%. I think like a lot of us kind of go through that phase where we're kind of like angry or triggered in the beginning because yeah. we we're just exposed to everything yeah. and we just, we, we want to get this, this info out there. And, yeah. um, you know, after a while, like you, you chill out. Cause I mean, it's just your lifestyle. It's who you are. You accept yeah. that. And, uh, you just start living and that's, that's like the real beauty. Um, so I've gotten away from that to myself and, uh, I'm much happier where I am now where I could um, just share it as part of a conversation. Um, but yeah, you, you just, you have to keep uh, involving just like with anything and, and yeah. keep changing as a person and, uh, and building your character. Yeah, totally. Well, awesome, man. This has been fun. I don't want to take too much more of your time. Thank you so much for being here. Let's, uh, let's plug your channel. Let's plug all the, the stuff that you're doing out there in the digital webs and how can people find you? Yeah, for sure. You can find me anywhere at Bananiac. So that's B A. N A N I A C. Um, you know, follow, follow my stuff. If you dig it, um, I post uh, videos. I'm, tr- I'm trying to do a weekly thing. Uh, I, <laughs> it's so hard to keep up with everything going on, man. Yeah. But uh, I try to do weekly videos on anything veganism. So I might vlog, um, showing a little bit of my personal lifestyle, what I, you know, do throughout the day. Um, I might do, uh, a response video so like uh you know the amazon rainforest was burning a couple weeks ago probably is is not doing too much better now yeah um so if things like that come up i kind of like want to get it out there um i'm about to do a video on uh uh greta uh I forget how it's oh yeah yeah thunberg thunberg yeah oh yeah and who's killing it and yeah. she's also vegan too mm-hmm. um so different uh current events that are going on I want to like, you know, talk about that in case like other people are not aware that things like that are happening. I do nutrition videos, um, recipe videos here and there. So I, pretty, I try to do a variety of stuff. So if you want to um, find me, it's Bananiac again on YouTube. Um, I do interviews. So uh, yeah, feel free to say hi and uh, connect. Awesome. But yeah. Awesome, thank man. you so much for, for having me on here, by the way. I can't say it again, man. Like, thank you for giving me your platform to share this message like like any opportunity i can get to get this out there is, is a freaking blessing and it's been awesome uh, connecting with you too man yeah brother i'm all for it dude the more we can talk about it, the more that bubble you know ripple effect happens into the universe and people are connecting the dots dude it's just exciting time to be alive right now absolutely man well yeah keep killing it dude keep uh keep pushing the message out there and um Keep in touch, man. Yeah, yeah for sure. We, we for definitely, man. So yeah, I'll link all of that stuff too in in the description, everybody, so people can just find you really easily and click on your links. And yeah, you as well. Keep up the good stuff, man. I know you're putting a lot of good energy out into the universe, and it's gonna come right back at you. So just keep up the good work, man.